She was between the ottoman and the floor. I couldn't see her face. So I rolled her over. And her pills were? Her yeah. pills were on top of the ottoman. I grabbed the telephone, I started doing cardiac massage, called 911, and from there it's history. This is horrible. On the day before Thanksgiving in 2009, Roy Bosley came home to find his wife of 38 years collapsed on the floor of their den. She basically stopped breathing. Carol was dead. It wasn't the first time Roy found her passed out. This is the back door to the house, and she is unconscious, laying over the shoe thing. So you come home and you find her that way? Yeah. So this is different than being asleep? She's not asleep. She is out. You have to shake her and shake her and shake her to get her to wake up. Would you consider this a normal sleeping position? Same thing here. Same thing here. She's totally out. No idea what's going on. She had been eating oatmeal and she went out while she was consuming the oatmeal and you can see that it's coming out of her mouth. It's a miracle that she didn't choke to death. You can see that she was watching television and she was using the remote control and passed out. Roy said he took the pictures to prove to Carol and her doctor that she was overdosing again and again. She'd started taking painkillers after she was injured in a bad car accident and had several spinal surgeries. In 2008, she went to Lifetree, a pain clinic in Salt Lake City, Utah, and was prescribed seven different drugs, including painkillers and antidepressants. The two big ones that stand out are the oxycodone and Percocet. And you know that those are both opiates. So why is she on two? We're talking about 224 pills of oxycodone, and we're talking about uh, 112 Percocets. Over the next year, Carol's doses more than doubled. By the time she died, she was taking 600 pills a month. That in itself is quite a message. Totally, completely out of control. And she didn't overdose because she was depressed or anything like that. She overdosed simply because she would take the medication and there was enough of it that it would make her confused and she would take more. So what was Carol like when she was on all this medication? Um, she was withdrawn. She didn't leave this room much at all. She spent much of her time in pajamas. Didn't leave the house for anything. Never done it, just seen it. After repeated trips to the ER for taking too many pills, Carol's family finally convinced her to get treatment for addiction. And two weeks into that program, she was managing her pain on Tylenol, nothing else. And she was happy. That was the neat thing. She was happy. She was in control of her life. But that didn't last long. Soon they were back at Life Tree, meeting with her pain doctor. We were ushered into a room, and he informed me that a chronic pain sufferer could not be an addict. This is Dr. Webster. Yes. Then he told me that he was her physician and that he would prescribe what he felt was appropriate, period. And from there it went downhill, the result of which is she died. I'm not going to respond to any of my former patients. There would be a HIPAA violation, and I think it would be unethical for me to talk about it. And it's always tragic when somebody dies under our care. I think if people overtake their medicine, they can get foggy, and then they can keep taking more medicine. That's a risk, and, and it can end in death when that happens. Um, ideally... Who's responsible for that? The, the patient themselves has to be sure that they don't take more than what's instructed. Would you prescribe someone opioids if they come out of recovery for drug addiction, specifically being addicted to opioids? I would have to evaluate it. Uh, it would depend upon um, 
It would depend upon the situation. Roy Bosley sued Dr. Webster for medical malpractice. They reached a settlement out of court. A couple of years ago, Dr. Webster told a newspaper that as many as 20 of his former patients died of opioid overdoses. He sold his pain clinic in 2010 and no longer sees patients. Should have stopped him then. Should have stopped him. It's been so hard to deal with because I literally regret every day that I didn't do something different. 